So instead of saying, I am broke, I am scared, I am lost, what if we started using I am and the words that follow it to build what we want to have in the future, to build what we desire, to build what we strive for, to build what the person, the version of ourselves that we want to be. And if we start reframing it that way, I promise you, you will feel the power in those statements. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! That's right. This is the Sales Wolves podcast, episode 147. And the title of this podcast, the title of this episode is I Am. And what I want to talk to you guys about in this episode is the power in the words that you speak, the power in the words that you think, the power in the words that you pray, the power in the words that you use on an everyday basis. And, you know, as many of you have probably read The Four Agreements, we've talked about it many times on this podcast. It's one of my favorite books. And uh, one of the chapters or one of the four agreements is honoring your word. And a lot of that has to do with, or sorry, be impeccable with your word. And a lot of that has to do with those ways that your, your verbiage, those ways that your language, those ways that the things that you say ultimately affect you in the long term. And so a lot of this has to do with law of attraction. But for me, I'm going to come at it from a biblical standpoint on this episode of the Sales Wolves podcast. Uh, and I think it may be a little bit of a different twist than maybe you've ever uh, heard. But if you think about the words I am, it's such a powerful, powerful declaration of who you are. I am. I am powerful. I am strong. I am courageous. I am fearless. I am capable. You think of those statements and how much power is behind that in those type of affirmations. But the reality is, if you really took a look at your life and if you really took a look at the things that you say on a daily basis, how many times are you using those words, I am? and not using what comes after those two words to build you up, but rather using the words after I am to break you down. The words after I am to speak negatively toward yourself, which reaffirms the negative that's already in your head, which reaffirms the negativity that is coming out of you on a daily basis, which reaffirms those fears that you have, which reaffirms those feelings of lack that you have. And it's a continual cycle. And so the way I want me to want us to reframe today is to look at how we can use this phrase I am to build us up and not use it to break us down. And so I want to come at it from a biblical perspective. I, I heard a, a sermon, and to be honest, I'm not even sure who the person was, that was preaching. It was a guest pastor um, at Transformation Church, which is uh, Mike Todd's church in uh, Oklahoma, I believe. And I was listening to this as I was working out a couple of nights ago. And I'd never heard this particular message spoken this way, but it talked about <clears throat> it talked about names and it talked about specifically prayer and what happens when you call someone by name and what happens when you say someone's name, how they respond to that. And so the example that I'll use is if you think. You know, my daughter, if she was walking, you know, down this hall right next to me and I said, Arden, she would turn around. I'd say, Arden, she would turn around. And what's happening there is as I say her name, she's basically turning around and her posture is, what do you want? Or what do you need? 
or basically what? So if you think of prayer and you think of the things that you bring to God, there is a story in the Bible and there's many stories in the Bible where this happened, but there's a particular story in the Bible where they ask Jesus, what is your name? And what does Jesus respond? I am. He said his name is I am. So if we rephrase or if we reframe the way we look at this two word phrase, I am as Jesus, an interchangeable word with Jesus, with God, with our creator, then let's think of it back to, as I was calling my daughter. So I say Arden, she turns and says, what do you, what do you want? And if I'm in prayer and I say, I am, it's no different than me saying Arden. It's no different than me saying God. It's no different than me saying Jesus. It's no difference between insert name here. That posture will be that that person attention will turn to you. And what do you want? So I would ask you, how many times have you prayed, meditated, cried out to God and said, I am. And when you said, I am, God turns to you and you have his attention and he's saying, what do you need? What do you want? So if we look at it that way, we have to be so gentle and so careful with the words that follow I am. Because how many times have you been in prayer where you said, I am broke, I am depressed, I am scared, I am lost. And so let's break that down. You say, I am, God gives you his attention and says, what do you want? And the next words out of your mouth are broke. You say, I am, God turns to you and says, what do you want? And the next words out of your mouth are depressed. You say, I am, God turns and says, what do you want? And he's, and you say, fearful or scared. The power that is in the words that come after I am changes everything. So instead of saying, I am broke, I am scared, I am lost. What if we started using I am and the words that follow it to build what we want to have in the future, to build what we desire, to build what we strive for, to build what the person, the version of ourselves that we want to be. And if we start reframing it that way, I promise you, you will feel the power in those statements. If you say, I am, and God says, what do you want? And you said, powerful. I am giving. I am courageous. I am determined. And you can still phrase those sentences, so the rest that comes after that to explain what you're going through as if he doesn't already know. But in those first three words, the I am blank, we have to be so careful, so cognizant of the words that we're using to define ultimately our life. And so as we look at our lives, and whether it's our prayer life, whether it's just the things that are running through our mind when we're driving from one meeting to the next, whether it's the things that are running through my mind, we're in the shower and we're getting ready in the morning and we're headed out the door saying, I am always late. Well, of course you're going to be late because you just said, I am always late. You just made a declaration that you are always late. Why would you not be late? Because you just declared it like I'm always late. I'm always behind. I'm always getting into trouble. I'm always, you know, arguing with my spouse. 
I'm always late on my bills each month. If we started turning those statements into these affirmations that can breathe life into us by saying, you know, I am going to be on time today. I am going to pay my bills on time. I am going to hit this goal. I am going to crush this goal. I am going to make that deadline. We will start to see a switch, not only in the pro product of what we're doing, but in our mindset as we're doing and going about the process of ultimately accomplishing those things, because we are making a single declaration of who we are and we're asking God to reaffirm and for us to have his power through us for the very thing that came after I am. And I do not want God focusing on the lack. I don't want God to focus on the weakness. I don't want God to focus on the negative. I want him to focus and I want to focus on the positive outcome on the other side of the negative. So we start with the positive and then we deal with the negative later. But these words, words have so much power over your life, especially the words that are running through your, your mind all day, that internal dialogue that you cannot turn off. If we can't turn it off, what we can do is we can start to be cognizant of it, be self-aware of these things, and start changing them for the better. Start changing them so that it in turn will change us, who we are, which will in turn change what we do in our outcomes, in our production. It's simple two words, I am. But if we start thinking of it the same way, I would say Arden, she would turn around and look to me and say, what do you want? God is that same relationship with us as a child with a father. He just wants to know what you want. And so are you telling him you want to be broke? Are you telling him you want to be scared? Are you telling him you want to be lost? Or are you telling him the things that you need to be in order to get over those things and get past those things and get through those things? It's a different way to look at things. But I promise you, for those of you that are watching and listening to this podcast right now, that are thinking, ah, pff, it's semantics. It's not a big deal. It's just a couple of words. Words are far more powerful than you realize, especially when you play them over and over and over, and they become the theme of your entire life. So I challenge you, the challenge of this podcast episode is to start looking at the way that you talk, looking at the way that you pray, looking at the way that you think. And when you say those things that are negative, first you have to be able to realize it. And the next step is to change it. I would love to know some of those things that you guys realize that you're saying. So please shoot me a message on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you can find me. I would love to hear some of those things that, man, I had no idea, but I was saying this over and over and over. I didn't even realize it. But more importantly, I want to hear how you changed it to become an affirmation for the things that you ultimately want. So with that, guys, this is episode 147 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!